Well, hi ho stampers. Are you ready for some watercoloring? Welcome back to my studio. This is Deb Felder. I always love having you stop by for some craftiness, and today we're going to learn how to do some watercoloring. Watercoloring can be very, very easy. Um, just let yourself go and just know that at the end, it's going to look really good. So let's get started. We're going to start with some of our watercolor paper. And before I do that, I like to prep it with my little tool here. This kind of deactivates uh, um, adhesive on stickers, but it also is very controlled when you are um, trying to get embossing powder not to go where you don't want it to go. So let me just give you an example on here. You can just take it and um, adhere it wherever you want it to go. And I'm just doing it on black paper so that you can see it. Um, where if you have one of those little sacks, and I love those little sacks, but this has more control. We do have them in the shop, so check it out. Um, I love them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and um, add this to my paper. And what this is going to do is to allow the embossing paper not to stick where you don't want it to. Okay? All right, so that is my little tool right there. We're going to bring in my larger of the um, Misty's, and I want to show you the stamp set that we're going to be using. All right, it is this one right here. It also comes with a die. They're included. It is a combo, so make sure you check it out. The dies are for all of these little um, pieces right here. Um, absolutely gorgeous. It is in the shop. And I'm also going to be using this for the sentiments. I love these sayings. They have all to do with your garden. And you know, flowers are blooming like crazy up here in the Northeast. So um, those are the two stamp sets that we're going to be using. I'm going to take my Misty and um, ink it up. So I'm using my Wow ink. And um, I love this, this clear ink. Uh, it's got a fantastic re-inker along with it. So you, if you get the pad, make sure you get the re-inker to go along with it. We've already conditioned our paper, so we're good to go on that one. I'm also going to be using our detailed um, gold embossing powder. We carry all of the colors of the detailed embossing powder, and I like that because when you have very fine um, images like this one right here, it, it doesn't get all gloppy and big, and it just stays so pretty and so, so little. So make sure you um, use detailed embossing powder when you want those types of images. All right, oops, we've got to put this up here on the top. All right, let me just make sure I can find a spot for my, there we go. All righty, so let's put this right up here like this. Okay, and then let's just Bring in my tray with my embossing powder. And you will notice that we don't have any embossing powder where we don't want it to be. Okay, so now let's take and heat her up. Now, a couple things that I did. I um, heated the whole thing up, and you'll notice that I don't wave my um, heat embossing gun back and forth. If you do that, um, it's not a hair dryer, but I always tell people don't wave it back and forth. It's just automatic because of hair drying. Um, but if you take and you just do it in a controlled um, way, start at one point and just go all the way over, go all the way over. Go the reason you want to do that is because you want to have the same heating. Um, they, you want it to heat up the same um, all the way through. If you're going like this, you have no idea how many times you've hit it over here and how many times you've hit it over here so when you're embossing start at one side and then just go down and then go down I do it kind of like a robot arm down 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 perfect then you'll see at the very end I always heat it from underneath I tried to show you that but 
between the camera and right here, it's hard to show. But I always heat it from underneath and it flattens out your paper. So if you've ever got curling paper, a lot of times on vellum, um, it'll curl. So what I want you to do is to just hit it from underneath. You can even you can even heat it underneath. There are times um, when I'm doing certain things and I always heat it underneath instead of on top. And make sure that you don't overheat it because then it just kind of melts and oozes. But do you see the detail in the fine detailed embossing powder? I love that. And, and make sure you look for that in your detailed embossing powder. We do carry that detailed in the shop. All right, so now it's ready to, it's ready, we're ready to color. So I'm just going to bring in a scrap piece of paper in case we overdo this. We're going to bring in our water and our little palette, okay, and um, of course our brushes, all right, and then our um, watercolor pans. So these are the ones I love using. Um, I just love my pans. If you need um, the little chart, let me know. I can send that on to you. And um, let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm really going to use just basically one color. And um, I, I am not a professional watercolor, but I do love to watercolor. So bear with me. And I do get quite a bit messy here. I'm going to grab some paper towels because I do blot a lot, okay? All right, so there's my paper towels. I think I am ready, and let's get started. Make sure your brush is nice and clean. Mine has some blue in it here. All right, we're ready to get started. I'm not a professional watercolor, so take this for what it is. I love doing it the way I do it, so um, if you've got a better way, go for it, all right? So I'm gonna basically use just one color, all right? And I'm gonna take, and I use the scrub method. So let's just get our paper a little bit wet. And what I'm doing is putting, because the color is on the end of your brush, you're gonna take and scrub it out so it's lighter toward the end, all right? So I started like that. Let's pick up some more raw color right here. And you see how it's darker on the inside than it is on the outside? Now on my sample, I did it the opposite. I want it to go from the outside to the inside. It's whatever you want. Now we can go back and tweak this afterwards and you'll see me do that. But I'm gonna do this all the way through. I'm gonna take it at the inside and scrub it to the outside, all right? So what I just did was I went back in and I softened it up. I added some water and I just softened it up. Now don't keep rethinking it. Sometimes um, you need to just put it away and then come back to it. Um, and it just makes it so much easier to look at it on a different day. You can change this whenever you want. Just, just add more water to it. And um, like I said, you can manipulate it any way that you want. Now you can go back in and take things off too, like I just did there. Um, you just add the water to it. You can blot it with your paper. Um, I found so many different ways to, to kind of work with that. But now what I'm gonna do is work on um, the leaves. And I always start with a base of yellow. I'm not quite sure why, but I always do. And um, it gives me a foundation to work with. All right, so it doesn't have to be a dark yellow. It can be just a you know, just a wash of some yellow, all right? And then when you mix in with the green, 
um, it just mix in, mixes in a little bit better. It also tells you where, where everything is. Whoops, see I forgot some little berries down here at the bottom, so I'll go in at the end and add those. I'm just adding a little wash of yellow right here. All right, so now I'm gonna go back in and uh, add some green. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my darkest green and I love these pans because you can you can move them. You can take them out and move them back. And that's where this little guy comes in handy because then I know where to put them back on my chart. All right, so make sure you, you contact me and uh, get your copy of that, all right? And so now what I'm doing is just taking my darkest of the greens and going right up the middle and letting it feather out. I will go back in and add some darker after it's dried and I will soften it up like I did with my reds. All right. So right now I'm just laying the color down. This pop of green just, just sets this off so pretty. Just dabbing these little spots right here and just scrubbing the color in. Letting it mix with the yellow. And we're gonna just take and blot that one, okay? A little bit too much color on that. All right, and we'll go back and we'll soften them up. And I have to go back and do those little berries down there, but I want to finish up with my greens. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just add some more color here, darker color. And softening these, blending them in a little bit more. All right, we'll let that dry and I'll add a little bit more um, vibrancy to that in just a minute. Let's go back and finish up some of these berries down here. I like the berries to be nice and dark. And now what we're gonna do is just kind of stand back and look to see where we need to soften it up where we need to add anything or take anything away. Remember to take something away, you're just gonna take and uh, add a little bit of water to it. So pretty, I love the way this came out. I love the way this came out. Let's, let's take a little bit away. And you notice I've got um, different, different containers, just always making sure that your water is nice and clean. Soften everything up. No harsh, harsh edges, okay? Oh, that came out good. I like the way that came out. And that's all that matters is that you're happy with your piece because this is a gift you're gonna give to someone. And this, you know, these kind of things are, are actually very um, frameable, all right? So I think we're good with that. Let's put this green guy back in there. I'm just happy with the whole thing, all right? And then we'll put our palette away here. And we'll take and move our water out of the way so I don't spill it. All right, so far so good. Very, very, very pretty. All right, and um, this is gonna take a little bit of time to dry and while that's doing, it's just damp right now. Actually, we can bring in our little misty. I've got the words all set up. Let's just make sure they're in on target here. What would we do without our misties? We've got both sizes in the in the shop, the big one and the little one. Not bad, not bad at all. 
All right, so let's take and ink that up. Oh, let me use my Wow ink first. I like to use the Wow ink ahead of time because it keeps it clean. And I just wanted to show you, we sell the Wow ink in a combo. And um, what I love about this is we have the reinkers. That's part of the combo. This reinker is so different. It's got the little ball on the top, so it doesn't eat up your foam pad. And all you do is just lay it on there like that. You see how easy it is? But also, um, like I said, the, the ball doesn't eat up your, um, your pad when you're laying it on there. All right, so um, I'm just gonna start off by adding a little bit of Wow ink so that it's easier to clean up. And then I'm just gonna And you really do want to use something like a Misty. If you don't have a Misty, if you have any type of stamp positioner, because um, on watercolor paper, sometimes the it's harder to stamp on there and get a good coverage. So I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, that was really good. I sometimes just surprise yourself. Um, I, it, it's some more than more than once. You really do want to. Um, make sure that it's got good coverage, but because there's so much texture in watercolor paper, beauty miss. Oh, I love the way that came out. All right, let's clean this. I don't have my gloves on, so I'm not going to take it off the misty right now. Uh, so we'll just take our paper out of here. Okay, now that we have our words on here, I'm going to take and do the background. Um, you don't have to do them in, in this order, um, but this is just the way I like to do it. So we're going to bring back in our, our um, watercolors and uh, we're going to take and get out the, uh, whoops, here's our little palette. Let's grab our watercolors. And we're going to do some of the, um, the outside. All right, so let's just take and... I'm just bringing in my Make Art Station because I'm going to get sloppy on this one. All right, so I'm going to make sure that I'm using clean water and I'm just going to add a little bit of water here and just show you how this goes on. All right, you notice I'm not getting too close to the images. All right, so now we're going to pick a color and I'm just going to take some of our yellows. And oops, let's see if I can get it in the picture here. Actually, I can bring it out. All right, and I'm just going to start taking and scrubbing that in. All right, I like to start light and then go back and do it again. That way there, you know, it's, it's always easier to take off or add, excuse me, than it is to take off. And this just makes your picture pop. Pretty, pretty, pretty. All right, we're gonna let that dry for just a little bit. And while we're doing that, we'll clean up this again. Okay. And you can do this in any order that you want. I like doing it this way because then I can see where the words are going to go. And then, you know, the last thing here is the, but I have one more really wow thing for you to do or for, for us to do when we're doing this. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my metallic watercolor paints. And if you don't have these um, and you like to watercolor, I would definitely suggest getting these. All right. So clean off your brush. Now watch what I'm going to do. These, when they react to water, it's amazing, all right? So what I'm going to do is just start getting some water on the gold right here. And you can see it kind of fizzing up. I don't know what the right word, word to, to describe it is, but the water reaction to this is amazing. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of pulling this a little bit, and I'm just going to take and hit my hand and that's where this comes in absolutely handy because it's so easy to clean up. 
and you can put as much or as little, but what this does is it adds that same glimmer that is on the embossing and that's on the um, card that we have. Amazing. All right, so let's clean that brush off. You don't want to overdo it, okay? Too much is overkill. Put these away. These are the brand new metallic watercolors. I love them. All right, let's bring back in our little um, base right here. And remember, I did cut out the inside of that. So we're going to add our card to it. Okay. Oh, so, so pretty. I don't want to... I don't want to turn it upside down yet, but what I usually do is I lay it flat and just um, and just rub over the back of it, and that's going to flatten out your picture. But for right now, this is still very wet, so that is my card. 